Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Engineering Money. It's Joey's week. It's a big week. Yes. We got adrenaline pumping. I just caught a spider. So, are you able to show it? Yeah, let's people? let's get a. You don't have to hear me scream and watch me try to catch it, but you can see it now. Dad, you didn't even scream. You were cold and calculated, Joey. Holy moly! What's that view? What big. a beaut! Look at all the meat on them bones. <laughs> yeah, Joey's a yeah, true humanitarian for not just killing it. Earlier. But there, there you go. Joey, Seems just remember if you do want to be room that happened. <laughs> if you do want to be human humanitarian and not kill it, just don't forget it. Right. On the way out of the <laughs> office, or it'll suffocate and die. That would be sad. But, uh, speaking, oh, now she's crawling around. Speaking of things that people want, segue into my segment today. Um, we're going to talk about the consumer discretionary sector. That's one of my favorite sectors. Right? What a sector. So last time I talked, I was talking about medical stuff, specifically um, uh, biotechnology. And the reason that I like medical stocks in uncertain times that we've had most of our podcast through is everyone always needs medical items and services. Consumer discretionary is kind of the opposite, where it's discretionary. You can live without it. It's what you want. Spiders in your room. Um, and so I wanted to bring up a couple ETFs to start, off, start us off. These kind of track the whole index. And okay. so looking at their performance gives you an idea of what the sector's been doing. So the first one is just called WANT, W-A-N-T. WANT. <laughs> and I bring that up first just because I think it's a great name. But it's, oh, it's a... the, the triple leveraged version. Yeah, triple leveraged. All right, let's pull it up on the big screen here. And oh. so you can see when coronavirus hit these stocks really hard. Um, it's a little more pronounced in the triple leveraged version, but... Uh, but it bounced yeah. back huge. Let's do year to date. Let's check it out. There's been some wild ups and downs. And the, the thing is, I don't think they did quite as bad as I was thinking they would do. I was like, oh, pandemic. Better not invest in consumer discretionary stuff. But they're People actually still want their things. own. If you, if you want to look at the index, it's um, XLY is the spider index fund. XLY? I'm choosing the spider fund because of the spider in the corner. Yeah, so 10% for the year so far, year to date. Yeah, and 22%, 52-week trailing. So yeah. that is, I think it's just under the s p 500 as a whole okay but it's doing significantly better than things like utilities and other uh like defensive stocks so it just kind of to me it goes to show how much if you thought the pandemic was you know a recession everything's scary you go to the, your defensive choices instead we got things like tech and consumer discretionary stocks booming so it's just kind of an interesting backdrop to the sector but there are some big players in here that you probably have heard of um amazon being the biggest one by far oh yeah and so it's like i think amazon you think of as one of the big tech companies <laughs> it is the consumer Woo. discretionary right because mm -hmm. not a lot of people get their necessities from amazon i guess that's fair some people do They're Especially during the pandemic, there. with the, with the the they're moving more into groceries and whatnot. So yeah. it's it is a fitting thing. Like this, this is the sector they belong in. Well, but the other player that um, is a big one is Target. Target TGT yes. has just Target like, is pretty great. They don't stop. 
and you can hardly see the effect they're, of the pandemic on their stock. They're part of the basic pH index. That's right. Low, they oh wait, actually, high pH I was index? invested in them for a long time, and I stopped because I was like, I've gained too much. There's no way they can keep this going, <laughs> and then they did. So. <laughs> yep. Uh, that's like uh, Lululemon was for a while. Right. Right. And then they they hit their ceiling. So here's my question for you, Joey. Do we know of any smaller cap players in this marketplace where we could potentially see some outperformance? So I do have one that I am personally invested in that is Bloomin' Brands. I think I've talked about this maybe in an episode earlier. It's it's B-L-M-N. They're uh, they're like... Texas Roadhouse? Uh, yes, they're Texas Roadhouse, Caraba's Italian Restaurant, and Bonefish Grill. And I specifically invested in them for Bonefish Grill because Bonefish is delicious. Okay. It's not in enough cities, which me- tells me they need to expand their Bonefish presence and then they'll grow. Well, I got one too. So, like, what? Um, you just like it because of Bonefish Grill? I like it because of Bonefish Grill, yeah. <laughs> Do you know any any of their fundamentals? I haven't dug into it. Ben, that you doesn't matter. Bonefish Grill. It's Bloomin' Brands. It's named after the Bloomin' Onion. Well, I got uh, BH is on my watch list. Um, Big Lari. <laughs> Big Lari Holdings. This is uh, Steak and Shake. Oh. And... Um, Western Sizzlin? I, I don't know. Something like that. Oh my but gosh, their volume is so low. Their their price they, to earnings is 0.35. They are way undervalued. They are so undervalued right now. They have no debt on their books. And their... Uh, uh, <clears throat> what's the thing? Their, their amount of sales coming in is larger than their market cap and their profit coming in is just barely under their market cap ah yeah i will say i saw a lot of um steak and shakes close near me in indiana well indiana doesn't matter so (laughs) i'm gonna just take that little piece of audio and chuck it out of my brain (laughs) Back at the end of 2009, <laughs> they had a 1 to 20 stock split. So that's a reverse split times 20. My so goodness. They've kind of reinvented themselves, I assume, after that. Well, and it used to be Steak and Shake was the uh, ticker name. Uh huh. Oh. But this guy, his name is Big Lari. Big Lari. He, like, bought it out and, in, and added the other restaurant as well or like i don't know maybe he owned steak and shake and then he bought another restaurant and changed it what the it also (laughs) owns three western sizzling company which Mm -hmm. you know that makes sense but things you might not expect underwriting commercial trucking insurance selling physical (laughs) damage and non-trucking liability insurance operates oil and going to the moon properties (laughs) and it publishes and sells magazines related publishing under the Maxim and Maxim brand name. <laughs> Wait, really? I didn't know that far. Okay. I'm buying it first thing this Monday morning. Big Lari. What are you doing? <laughs> oh, I'm so glad. Sorry to steal your thunder, Joey. <laughs> I just oh, had it. I, I had it sitting on my on my on list, list of stocks here. To talk about here, because Amazon's a big one. The other huge one is Tesla, obviously. That's mm-hmm. every other headline you see. So I don't have a ton to add to that conversation. Oh so I'm glad my you gosh, Tesla's been all. getting <laughs> smashed recently. Have yeah, they really? Yeah, it's because there were. Um, I don't know. There's an investigation into like they had 11 crashes with their. Is Maybe it because 17. Elon isn't the richest man in the world anymore, and so all the hype is gone? They've actually, <laughs> yeah, so exactly. they, they tanked a bit in February, but have been holding pretty steady since then. Yeah, they really did tank. <laughs> they, 
this is still insane. insane how big they are and how fast they got so big. Tesla is always going to be interesting because I don't, I don't think we're going to get another Tesla story in the next 10, 20 years. Like, went from nothing to major S and P five hundred thing in like a year. <laughs> yeah, like, yep, yeah, essentially, yeah, uh, a year. Well, and they just the big news is that Elon just said they are going to make humanoid robots. Yes, but they will be sized so that you can run away from them and overpower them. God, oh, Tesla was convenient. Was sub a hundred bucks in twenty twenty. That's that just makes me yeah, sad. They're, they're <laughs> just, it's nutty. Oh, that makes me so sad. Then you wouldn't have bought it anyway. You're right. I Actually, mean, you wait a second. No, like they weren't. They weren't sub a hundred. Yeah. This is because of stock splits that it's displayed like yeah. this. Never mind. Yeah. Well, right. But the thing is that every time there was a stock split, everyone bought, right? So yes, the actual price wasn't beneath a hundred, but the market cap was that much lower. Yeah. So there's some. You know, it's been a crazy year for things that people want. <laughs> I agree. Rather than what they need. Because the flip side is consumer staples, which I'll probably, we can touch on quickly because I'm not going to have a bunch to talk about that either. But consumer staples include like food companies. I was invested in General Mills because I used to work there. Um, and I thought, oh, this is great. Pandemic, food company will do awesome. They've been okay. I think they've been one of mine that's lost money and then it came back up a little bit the key is you just have to do the opposite of what you think is going to happen exactly right that's 2020 finance yeah yeah <clears throat> the uh the kangaroo market kangaroo market <laughs> well but <laughs> Even with the, um, <laughs> I wanted to bring up with the group of companies that goes with Tesla are the other automakers, of course, and they've actually been doing pretty nicely despite things like chip shortages hurting their, their <clears throat> supply. Yeah, GM and I, I've just heard a lot in the news about GM and uh, Volkswagen in particular. Mm-hmm. They're making big EV promises. Yeah. I'm all about Toyota, though. Yeah, Toyota is the goat. I like Toyota. Uh, I don't... Although they... Uh, I don't remember their ticker. Yeah, I think is the ticker. They've been making me sad the past five days. <laughs> yeah, but that's the past five days. Wow, holy poo. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's just taking it back down to the level that it was before. I've been holding them for a while, so it doesn't really, really matter. But but they give a healthy dividend. and Oh, my goodness. Yeah, that's funny. Wait, am I looking at the right thing right now? I think yeah, so. Yeah, I think so. It's crazy. No, no, look at TM. TM. But, yeah, it's pretty much the same thing. They, they're – I guess there's a lot of after-hours trading on them because they're – if you look at the candlestick charts the bars are always so far separated from each other yeah they're um i mean they're on the japanese stock exchange oh that makes sense so well and then that's the other thing that makes the dividends not as nice is that they're taxed at a higher rate because it's a foreign dividend yeah, right just like kl yeah i always get my foreign taxes from owning kl yeah and KL was doing so well for just a moment there, and then. Well, it's been a it's been a rough time for metals. Yeah, precious metals <laughs> yeah. are seeing a some some rough days. This is just interesting because inflation value. has been in the news all over the place. I mean, I'm I'm okay with it. It just means that there's more value right now. It's not yeah. going to be like this forever. Yeah, we got time. Um, 
just buy more KL, even though it's already too large of a portion of my portfolio. Oh, man. <laughs> me too. K- KL has given me that that warning. It's like, hey, this is above 6%. <laughs> I think I'm like at 9% now for KL. It's really bad. <laughs> it's still in the green for me because I bought it so long ago, mm-hmm. which, you know, makes me happy. <laughs> but it's definitely down. Yeah, I think half of my shares are still in the green. It's not how it works. Very good. What do you mean? It's not how it works to have things that are in the green. And things that are in the red. You can only lose money. Yeah, Yeah, I guess you're right. Oh, um, guys, I just remembered, looking through my portfolio here, one that I wanted to talk about last time in the healthcare sector that I didn't. Because... Last time I was talking about gene editing stocks, but there's a good old run-of-the-mill healthcare stock, Eli Lilly and Co. Oh, yeah, we haven't LLY. talked about them in a while. And Eli yeah. Lilly will not stop hitting 52-week highs. <laughs> what is their ticker? L-L-Y. L-L-Y. <laughs> My goodness. I and remember I was invested holy crap. in them. crap. Yeah, we talked like, about them in, like, summer of 2020 yeah i was wow. invested in them and like at like around 150 dollars and it went up a decent amount and i was like okay that's enough for me and then i got yeah. out <laughs> they don't stop though and it's neat because you know they're indiana based have a bunch of research at purdue well so i like what do them. you know about this this one joey voyager therapeutics Voyager Therapeutics. I've heard the name before. What do they do? They're gene edit, gene therapy. Okay. I wonder which technology. I personally like the ones that use CRISPR-Cas for gene editing. Because there's one that's like uh, Sangamo Therapeutics. They use a zinc finger technology. What the that heck is that? I don't that? think it's as cool. And they've um, not been doing well. What is the zinc finger I don't know exactly how it works, but it's probably, it's like this epigenetic modification where basically you have some chemical technology come in that makes your genes express different ways compared to CRISPR-Cas, which literally edits the genome. Uh, That's why I like the CRISPR-Cas, because it's like directly going in and saying... We're going to inject you with this thing that'll cut out this gene, insert that gene. Sci-fi tech. Sci-fi tech. Scary stuff. Oh, I'm looking at the wrong Voyager. Voyager Digital. No, no. That's... You want to look up Voyager Therapeutics. Because they came up in my screener yesterday. It's like, I wonder if this is one that Joey talked right. about already. But I couldn't remember. No, I haven't seen them. Well, that's neat. So they, they focus on severe neurological diseases, which might include, okay, it's got like lateral sclerosis. It does include Alzheimer's, which I think is think, interesting. We just talked about Lily. Lily's been booming because they've uh, come up with good clinical trials for um Alzheimer's mm-hmm. therapeutics, mm. which is crazy because that's like Alzheimer's has nothing you can do about it right now. Yeah. So to have a drug that actually helps is a very big deal. So that's that's what's been in the news for Lily. Man, I wonder what the next thing is, because we've come up on the cusp a few times now with humanity. Like now our big challenges are cancer and alzheimer's right what's next if we're solving these there's there's going to be something yeah well that's the thing because cancer yeah cancer is the the big one everyone knows cancer is the one that gets you if nothing else does but yeah there's alzheimer's is one that has nothing you can do there are other little things that are more rare but i'm saying like, like what, once what once everybody? we overcome those hurdles maybe it's something like because you know 300 400 years ago there weren't too many people that knew that alzheimer's was a thing 
Right. Because we never got to that People point. So them. what's the marker at 150 years? I don't know. But that's the big question we're going to leave you with today because we're at 20 minutes and that means I need and to cut how myself to invest-